What's up, y'all? We're back out in the garage. Uh, it's been a while since we posted anything, but you know, been busy with work, busy with life. You know, took a couple snowboarding trips. You know, busted my ass down the mountain a few times with standard stuff. So yeah, we're back out in the shop today. We're gonna be working on uh, taking uh, some modifications to the YJ's roll cage. I want to add a rear halo uh, to the back of the cage. I wanted to do it for a while. Um, I, I eventually do want to do some sort of like an aluminum roof on here. Um, and I do want some uh, protection up top for a rear facing light bar and some other things. So let's get after it. As you see, we got the Jeep down a little tires. We're gonna be doing something here, a little special here in a couple weeks. So let's go ahead and leave it on those. But what I wanna do, so I wanna add a rear hoop halo that comes off this uh, effectively right behind the B pillar, loops around, ties in. That way it comes out here. We can tie it back into the main cage. Maybe we'll end up looping it down to these connectors. We'll make it nice and strong. That way we can get some, uh, some rear face and light bars up there, some stuff that, that's well protected and it'll give us a good base for uh, doing a roof in the future. So my big old head won't get wet sitting in the seat. So got the bender all lined up here. Been working in Bentec. Got a fresh stick of two inch DOM. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm glad I saved some when I originally built the cage because uh, if you've seen two prices lately, I'm starting to think crack cocaine is probably cheaper. So if you're considering building a buggy, maybe you should uh, evaluate your life choices, see if you want to be a drug addict first. So let's get at it. All right, so we got a JD Squared Model 32 Bender. Uh, got it with a swag off-road converted hydraulic over uh, air over hydraulic setup. Um, if you have one of these and you're using the ratchet and tube, you need to you need to spend a coin and upgrade because that's for the birds. But anyways. We got everything mapped out in Bentec, designed how we wanted it. Um, what I like to do, and you see here, is I always add three inches worth of cutoff at approximately all of my tubes, because I really hate to waste a tube because I was stupid, had a bad measurement, you know, bent one degree too much, whatever you want to call it. So it's always good to add a couple extra inches on the end. I got everything marked up. I have two 52 degree bends in this bad boy, and we're gonna get it done. So definitely one of the bigger questions I get is uh, when you're building in a cage you're doing some sort of tube project and you've got compound bins right so you got multiple bins on a single piece of tube how do you get those bins onto the same plane right so i got to do a bend here for this initial turn and i'm doing another 52 degree bend 28 inches or so down the line so how do i make sure those bins line up so i don't turn into a slinky looking corkscrew so one of the things and there's tons of ways to do this you see it with clamps you see it was homemade th widgets, whatever you want to call it. You can buy stuff for this. Because I took one of these El Cheapo exhaust clamps, and you can see this bad boy's jerry rig. Um, welded a flat piece of steel on top, threw a little, uh, little nut on the bottom of it, welded that on so you can clamp it up against it. And what you do is when you lock the piece of tube in for your first bend, all right, so with Bentec software, you can kind of set where your preference is as far as where you start your bends. I always like lining mine up here with the end of this block on the front of the die. So I've got all my dies programmed in my Bentec software for my tube starting here. So what I'll do is go ahead and lock it in where you want it on that first bend. Go ahead, tighten your, tighten your bolt down, get everything where you want it. And then what I'll do is I'll take this, and we'll come on all the way down here to the end, right? You take this on the end, right? And we'll tighten that on there clamp it on there you get on there nice and tight and you can use one of the bigger exhaust clamps so you can use it with any size tube when you got um, then you throw your angle finder on top of here and you you make sure that the clamp is rotated and locked in since it's at zero it can be at zero it can be at 10 it could be 20 degrees whatever you want to use as your reference angle you know some people might get real crazy and use 69 degrees I mean that's up to you I support it anyways but yeah so I use zero degrees it's just simple it's easy to see from the other side of a 24 foot stick of tube. So yeah, what you do is you lock it in there. And then once you finish your first bend and you move down to the next bend on the line, you basically just rotate your tube and you lock it in the bender with the angle finder set at zero degrees again. That way, you know, all your, all your bends are on the same plane. And there's a lot of times too, when you're looking to do a bend, I'll give you an example here, where when I got this X bracing, right? Coming off of my B pillar, that X bracing go down, goes all the way down to the footer where it ties into the frame. It has a different angle bend on a different plane. So what you have the capability to do, you know, with your Bentec software, or 
if you're, you know, you have a giant brain that's much larger than the capabilities of mine, um, you can basically use this to lock in your tube. Say you got to rotate 20 degrees counterclockwise. Well, you rotate 20 degrees off your reference point, lock it in, and send it. And the big thing is, don't ever take that off, right? Don't take that off while you're bending. If you have to take it off because you got a short piece of tube and you got to move to the other side or something like that, that's fine. But you've got to have the tube locked in the die when you take it off so you're sure it doesn't rotate. Otherwise, Godspeed. But yeah, little trick I got. So let's get the bended and wear your safety protector. If you don't, I don't really care, but at least I told you to. So we got the first pin uh, locked down the banner. We haven't released the pressure off it yet. You may notice when I lined it up and talked to you, and I said we're gonna make a 52 degree bend. So you might look down here in my degree finder. You say, Tyler, what in the tarnation are you doing? That's a 54 and a half degree bend. Well, so the concept that you gotta make sure you're considering, which you know, you can never you can never bend too little while it's still locked in. It's spring back. All right. So what I've noticed, what I typically see is somewhere between two and three degrees of spring back on here. And if you don't know what spring back is, I'm about to show you when I release the pressure off this. Boom, so there's your spring back. And as you can see, we're right here at about 51 degrees, right? So I saw approximately three and a half inches, sorry, not three and a half inches, two and a half degrees of spring back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up right to the other side of 55 degrees. I'm gonna lock it back in without taking the tube out. And I'm gonna get that extra degree on there. So I guess right to 52 degrees and we'll be good to go. So there we go. There you see it. Ran it back up to 55 uh, and a half degrees. And she kicked back right exactly where we wanted her at 52. So what we'll do is get this tube moved on down the line. We'll get it lined up on my next bend line. And we'll get it cracked. All right, so we got it locked out. First bend came out nice and clean. Didn't do anything weird with the tube, so that's good. You know, speaking of which, make sure you lubricate your shaft, boys. Don't just be ramming it in there. All right, you gotta make that thing sure that thing's got lots of lubrication. Otherwise, you can do weird things to the tube. So we get all kinds of bound up in there. But we got locked it all down in at the next bend. As you can see, zero degrees. So we're gonna be perfectly on the same plane. You know, obviously it's not a sure thing. I'm, I'm sure I'm bound to screw it up. I screwed it up before, and damn right I'll do it again. So let's get the second one flowing. So I like to use this WD-40 specialist. White lithium grease when I'm doing my bending. It's pretty cheap. Had good results. I make sure I get the die itself, and then uh, I get the tube itself. Anywhere that she's gonna be contacting metal on metal surfaces. Now obviously this stuff is designed to do this, but last thing you need is it binded up in there, so as far as I'm concerned, there's no, no such thing as too much lube here. So let's bump her in. Got everything locked in. Let's make this bend. If I can't get snap by the tube that comes around. Practice makes perfect because we are right on 52 degrees. So, there's our cut lines. That air compressor is real freaking loud. Let's get this thing out the bender. Now, before we go in the notcher, let's go ahead and get this excess lopped off. That way it's easier to handle. <laughs> All 
All right, so now that we got the tube bent, we gotta start knotting it, right? And what we're gonna have it do is we're gonna have it fit right in between my main runners that go from A to C, right? So on the outside, well, on the inside, there's a 48 inches apart, right? Center to center is 50 inches, two inch, 121 DM. So what I like to do, I got a nice straight reference point. So I got this piece of two by two quarter wall and I'm marking my 50 inch on the outside here, my 48 on the inside, right? So I got a good reference before I go to the notch here. As far as where I'll be looking to start my actual notch, and where I'm looking for it to end up. All right, so I'm a little bit of a raggedy bitch today. Um, forgive my workbench, it is absolutely disgusting. I got my notch here in here. Um, you know, my vice workbench, everything's a little rickety these days. She's got a good lean to her, so what I'm doing to make sure I'm able to duplicate the notch on either side, as I went ahead and I measured this angle that she was tilted up and rotated the tube until I matched that angle here on the other side. So, what's up girl? So hopefully that's good. Um, but a 52 degree bend, I kind of size this up and you can see I got a two inch hole saw on here. And from where I measured, where I'm thinking I'm at, um, I definitely offset about a quarter inch. I can always come back and take more tube off. So that's, that's the big thing. As much as tube is these days, I ain't trying to waste nothing. So, let's just think, get this thing done. I definitely like to, to lubricate my hole saws as well. You know, it's gonna see quite a bit of heat here knocking out this notch. Let me, uh, let me put my glasses on before I end up blind. I don't have a real deep hole saw on here. I'm gonna have to get here and cut this piece off. Hold on, give me that. Have you ever mentioned how much I love cordless tools? to do is score these things and then come in and basically use a pair of vice grips to get the damn thing off like so there we go. now we can keep on pushing forward with the notch so. You want to prevent that? Get yourself some some deep hole saws. There we go. Last clean up.
All right, y'all, so we got it all notched up. Um, I gotta tell you, it actually fit together pretty good. So, did a little bit of work on the uh, fitment here, but I gotta tell you, it, it looks damn good, and I'm not gonna do anything else on that. So yeah, we got this rear halo on here, and, and I'd say it's coming up about how I like it. Um, gotta figure out what I'm doing with the uh, down tubes. When you look up here, or how I'm gonna go join that in here. If I'm gonna come all the way down to this node, or if I'm gonna do something fancy and do some sort of a 180 degree, 90 degree, 60 degree, something bang kind of there. So yeah, but for now, I'm gonna do a center tube that comes right off the cage, right off that triple joint there, and ties into there. We're gonna get that cut. <laughs> abrasive blades they're definitely not the most desirable but if you're nice to them and you let them eat like they should they make pretty quick cuts all right so this five-way notch is now going to turn into a six-way so i got what i like to do whenever i'm doing a complex notch whichever end has more <laughs> more notches to do i like to do that first so i got this end done up i think the fit up's pretty good i'll do some final grind it on to make it do what it needs to so now we're going to make sure that lines up so you know yeah it's tilted up i got a little extra so what i like to do is i'll just mark where i expect the inside to be which is this leading edge right here and what i'll do is i'll cut a little of this side of the actual mark that way i can work my way into it so i can get the gaps i want over here i can get the gap i want there and i can get the fitment i want right there one of the nice things about this bailey notcher is it can do damn near anything. But when I did that double notch there, I knocked put the tube in. I cut a 40 degree notch into one side and then rotated, locked it back in, cut a 40 degree notch on the other side. So there's no rotating. There's no worrying about getting off plane or anything like that. And what I did is I went ahead, same thing I was using when I was bending, I threw my exhaust clamp on it when I made that notch. So that way I can line her up and get a perfect uh, knots to line up with these two. All right, so I dropped the speakers down and then uh, got in here with a wire wheel. Cleaned up all these joints. That way I can go ahead and attack, out the, attack everything in place. Had to drop the speakers. Probably gonna have to find somewhere better for them to go for final welding, but just we'll attack everything, they'll be fine. So, time to get to welding.
Yeah, so we're back out in the garage today. Had a pretty productive day yesterday. Um, did end up calling it quits after we got the uh, the main halo bent. And I think the main reason for that was I wasn't I wasn't exactly sold on how I wanted to tie it into the back of the cage. Uh, you know, my main goal with this hoop is to kind of have it more of like a rear facing type visor, help me out, than, uh, than a whole new cage profile. So I was thinking about it quite a bit. Um, and here's what I came up with. So as you can see, the back of the cage has a, a pretty defined profile, right? And I've got several bars that follow it. So, you know, we were touring around yesterday and uh, it definitely wasn't what I envisioned when I first started bending it. Well, you see the masking tape here. So if we came back and tied into that central node and I was worried that that was just gonna get way too busy. And then when you look at, somebody's hauling ass on the way by, you know, you're gonna set a whole new cage profile by, by having a tube come down off there. So what I really, my main goal here is I wanna to get to a position where I've got some sort of support on here to, you know, it's not if we roll, we're gonna roll. So, <laughs> you know, this thing's been upside down more times than I can count, is having some sort of support that ties into here on either side. So it's not on a, a 12 inch fulcrum by itself getting levered down and tore up. So. What I came up with and started thinking about was I'd like to get I'd like to go ahead and bend a tube and I may use each and three quarter for this first two inch in the main structure of the cage. I'm gonna go ahead and bend just probably bend like a hundred and sixty degree bend and see if I can't notch it in there real nice. I like the I like the way that lays out. I think it's got a good funky look to it. I like the profile it gives, but I also like how it maintains the rear cage profile that's already existing. So let's get to cut some tube and we'll see if, see if we'll like it. So I was able to get something going on. Um, I really like how these turned out, actually. They gave me the look I was going for. They still don't rob away from the cage line. I had to hand notch all the joints on these, just with doing it on a bend. You know, I didn't end up in a good position to use the notch really for anything, and that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and tack them in. Um, they're relatively symmetrical. All right one definitely hangs a little bit lower. I might see if I can mess with that a little more, but yeah. Get them all tacked in, go from there. So I gotta tell you, uh, I'm definitely happy with how everything turned out. Um, still need to come in and final weld it all, but it's uh, exactly what I, I pictured I'd be looking for. So I'll definitely be looking on ordering a rear facing light bar to fit up in here. I want to make sure we get some more light than from that little dinky thing out there for reverse purposes. It's pretty damn dark out in the middle of the woods at 2 a.m. So, but yeah, definitely uh, happy with how it all turned out. Like I said, I got to get back in and, and finish welding it all in, but I just laid all the simple, simple welds right across the top so I get everything locked in and get it all painted up. We'll finish it up this week.
So we got it all welded up. Um, got everything pretty good. A little bit of a contortionist. I took a little bit of video for y'all while I was doing it. Um, seeing my big ass crawl around up in there. So yeah, I'm gonna take a little wire wheel to it and um, and get it cleaned up and we'll give it a good wipe down and uh, we'll spray a little, little coat of paint on it. I mean, we're gonna scrape all of it off at one point, but might as well start clean, so. What's up y'all? So everything's been going pretty good, getting this thing together. Um, spent a little bit of time the other night getting all the uh, bars on the cage final welded, and that's turned out good. Threw a coat of paint on it. Yeah, a little early, because uh, I'm working on uh, some brackets to add another addition to it today. Yeah, we got the cage all welded up. Got uh, all the speaker cans reinstalled. Everything's good there, so now I'm gonna finish it off. I got a, uh, picked up a nice rear-facing light bar, so I'm gonna make a couple brackets today, get that on there, and uh, we're gonna wrap this whole project up. So I just got a little electrical tape holding it up there. So he'll give you an idea of what we're gonna be doing after right now. Got this 26 inch light bar I got off of Amazon for like 40 bucks. So that way we can have a nice rear face and work light. All right, it's got these little dinky brackets on it. So I'm just breaking some tabs. I'm gonna weld them on the back of the cage and get it wired in. Piece of scrap laying around. Mapped out a pair of tabs. Let's get to cutting. There she is, got the light bar all tied in, got some nice tabs made, got it tucked up in there pretty tight. Really happy how that turned out, that thing is real bright. So yeah, I think we're about done here. So it was a good project, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's something I've been thinking about doing here for the past three or four years and I just don't think I've had the ball start slanging to you about it, so cool. And what kind of video would this be if I didn't give you the chance to get blinded by the light? That thing is bright, so that's perfect. That way, Captain Five Head's rig breaks down in the middle of friggin' nowhere. I'll plenty of light to drink all my beer while he fixes it. So, good stuff. Yeah, so that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Appreciate y'all watching, and uh, we'll get back with you. Y'all have a good one.